Well, so you really Virginia. don't think you could out act Pattinson? Because I think Defoe would give me trouble, but Pattinson, I think I can go toe to toe with. No, you can't. No, have you seen Good Time? Nash, no. If we told you to act right now, you wouldn't be able to do it. Tell me something right now. Re- recite the milkshake scene from There Will Be Blood. Do you know that scene? No. I know. I'll right. just give you. We'll set up a new scenario. All right. You are. I could do Pootie Tang. That's my milkshake. <laughs> You're Sound in a room <laughs> by yourself, and a monster's coming. Act. <sighs> Oh, I need a script. I need a script a, yeah, to work with. That was with. a terrible. Yeah, scene. I need a script. Such a basic scene. Act scared, and you can even do that. <sighs> you just found out. Again. Oh, <sighs> and the Oscar goes to <laughs> anybody else. I just yes. want to thank Nerd Soup. Thank <laughs> you very much. <laughs> Built up Nerd Soup from the ground, and now I'm here. So even the bad actors are, are better than you. You can't act like who? Act like I like you all. Out time. of all of us, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Soup Podcast. I am Bo Oliver, joined today by Aaron, the Nerd Soup Monkey, and Nash, Academy Award nominee. Yeah. I'll give you a nominee. Eh, sag. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm against that, Just too. Spit Actually, my, sag is... Sag spit is, in my face yeah. next time. Yeah, sag is prestigious. Spit in my Teen face. Teen Choice Award. That's disrespectful. Okay. No, Although there have nice been some... My neck Daniel Day-Lewis won a Teen Choice Award. Australian Teen really? Choice Award. No. Oh. <laughs> Australian, yeah. That, I don't well, know. Some of three-time nominee. For Australian? Best guess. Ooh, Who? Wait, well, you know, that was MTV Award. I don't know. He has a lot of those things. I'm against putting an Academy Award nominee. Why it's not? either you won or you didn't. But I don't want to like, see Academy Award nominee. Will like Smith. Zombieland 2 trailer. Yeah, if you can. Yeah, put, yeah. Oh, they put, they overdid it so much. But that's no, well, no. Look who we got. It's nominees. only the winner. It's only the winner. I'm just happy. Everybody to be gets That's nominated. what they say. I'm just happy. It's to It's like be Peyton Manning. He, Being anybody nominated can win is one. enough for me. Yeah, but you know what it is. We're in a trophy. Uh, everybody gets a trophy era. Yeah, that's why that's, it's, it's, that's it's why pathetic. I don't like it. No, you, you, I'm, I'm on you both use LeBron's sides nine uh, championship appearances as part of his resume. Totally different. No, but you don't. Put, uh, it's, it's basically nine, nominated. No, nine no, finals no, appearance. LeBron you don't have James. to go through no, four other actors champion. to get to the nominee. Yes, I mean, you do. Yeah, but you're not battling one on one for a seven game series. It's completely different. Appearing in a championship series is way way harder than being a nominee. Look at that. look at the actors who have been. Johnny Depp's been a nominee. You know, Carmelo's never been to a final. Carmelo's fat ass never going to find himself in the finals. You know? He might be going to China now. Uh, maybe. Join Lance Stevenson. And Stefan. Oh. Nick Legends just go and dominate China, huh? They really do. And Beasley was there for a little while. Yeah, and you can listen to this podcast on <laughs> iTunes at the Nerd Soup Podcast and SoundCloud at the Nerd Soup Podcast, Spotify, Nerd Soup Podcast, nerdsoup 4 you at gmail.com. Send us your fan questions, Nerd Soup 4 you on Twitter. Yeah, let's get right to it. First story today. Guess we'll start with the Lighthouse trailer. Oh yeah, we were kind of teasing Willem Dafoe, Robert Pattinson, and Robert Eggers. His second film after The Witch. You guys need to see The Witch, both of you. I hear homework s- tonight. I'd have to under things. the skin. I'll you want to watch you. it after this? I'm not even kidding. I can't. But no, I, I appreciate the offer. <laughs> I really can't. Not Are you, you doing this to me because I didn't go see Once Upon a Time with you yesterday again? No. You're getting revenge on me. You didn't invite any of us to go see Once Upon a Time. You invited me, and I said no. Wow. You already saw it again. He sees that my ranks are you going didn't up invite me when soup. you went to go see it again. <laughs> I went to go see it yesterday, actually. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. I t- I like and you again. didn't invite him? No. Yeah. <laughs> but I was invited by somebody else. I couldn't. It wasn't my place to invite. Okay. I was the invitee. All right. I'll, I'll stay out of everybody's business, but <laughs> wow, this looks amazing. Man. This does look fantastic. It is just so like grim and eerie and the black. I love the black and white. I mean, that really drew me in. Um, Very square. Aspect ratio, yeah, going for the perfect square, almost. I think oh, it's a one point one nine. The octopus scene too. Just the octopus. Small little shot of like Pattinson going to throw a punch. Well, everyone was saying that this movie is fucking awesome. What did it premiere? Con. Con or Sundance or one of those. One of those. But everyone's been raving about this, and especially Pattinson and Defoe's performances. Defoe's a guy I'd like to see one. He's. I feel like he's always nominated, but like, well, maybe just the past two. <laughs> what does he say in this movie? What makes you want to be a wiki? Yeah. He's good. Yeah, he's good. Yeah. I like that guy. And like Pattinson, how long we've been here? Something weeks. of a wiki myself. This Two is days. like his last. Uh, we were saying when he got cast as Batman that after Twilight and those movies, he kind of took a step back and chose his uh, projects more. Uh, this is the movie nobody's going to see, but solidify him as a good actor. Well, yeah, <laughs> but, but he's still been doing these smaller films, and he's been doing great in them. And this is the last one before. All right, now I'm back. Get this paycheck, and I'm going to do Batman and kill it, or not. Who knows? But. 
I'm I trying to will. tell people who don't know. I'm like, listen, he's going to be a great Batman. You should just get on the bandwagon now. Be one of those early people. Because well, I'm it- telling you. I'm telling you, he's going to be a good Batman. Well, even if he gets nominated, then they could put... For Batman? Before the Batman trailer. Oh. Oscar. <laughs> no, no, Academy no. Award nominee, Robert Pattinson. Maybe, just because it's Batman. Maybe he'll win. My sister was so disappointed. I think I... You need to tell her. Sit her down. I tried to say, like, he's a pretty good Hand actor. Hand on the shoulder. Listen. Because I was showing her the lighthouse, the 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 picture. It, it was before the trailer came out. I was showing her the picture that, like... Uh, him and William Defoe looking out. And I was like, oh, look at him. And I was like, oh, did you know he's going to be the new Batman too? She's like, oh, what? No, come <laughs> on. And I was like, it's not that bad. Relax. That you know? is the collective voice of the internet when he was casted. <laughs> oh, what? No, come on. <laughs> For every casting, really, when it comes to Batman. Yeah. I'm convinced at this point they could cast Army Hammer as Batman. They'd be like, he looks too much like Batman. He's too good of a casting. <laughs> For Lighthouse, this fucking... If this runtime is like 150, hour 50 minutes, it might be my favorite movie of all time. I feel like it's going to be a crisp runtime. Yeah. I think it's going to go even crisper. Yeah. Hour, you said hour 20? Yeah, hour 50. Oh, you said hour fi- I thought yeah. you said hour 20. Um, No, I think it could sit around hour, hour and a half. Even, it yeah, it, it even gives more. me, it reminds me of a lot of the old movies like Tarkovsky, mm-hmm. Bergman. It's got that same feel. Obviously, they go with the black and white, which black and white is fine to me, but I feel like black and white was a thing. It's We don't know how to make color, so... That's why they're black and white. Yeah. But now people use it as an aesthetic choice, which is cool. It gives it that retro feel. And Ooh, nailed it. One hour, 50 minutes. Oh, yeah? Nice. Crisp. Did you see that before? No, I swear to God. Oh, I believe you. And Are you acting right now? No, if okay. I did. <laughs> well, that would put the nominee before acting. the uh, podcast. Yeah, it's a win-win here. You're uh, either lying, but you're a great actor. Like Once Upon a ho- Time of Hollywood, I really liked it, but 2.40? Ooh. What is with you with run times? I like a crisp run time. <laughs> <laughs> that movie was a great movie, but it was... Long. I think it was just, it yeah. felt longer. Bergman, what is that? What? Bergman? Hour, what is he? <laughs> hour what 45, is that? hour Swedish. 50? No, but Bergman's best films are usually like an hour and a half. Seven Seals' exactly. best movie is like 88 oh, I minutes. I thought you were talking about the Michael Keaton movie. Birdman? Yeah. That's a great movie. <laughs> That's a two hour. But somebody like a Tarkovsky, his movies are all like six hours. But he does preference his movies as watching, I think it's not paint dry in real time. It's, it's molding clay in real time. It's a hell of a selling point. No, it's not. You know that? <laughs> <laughs> He's good, though. But this movie, it looks like the black and white is going to work rather than the color. I, yeah. I just, I don't know if it's if because it's I saw the trailer that way. I just can't picture it in color now. And I think it would just lose its whole, the whole aspect of the, the like, the what is it, what is it, eeriness yeah, yeah. kind of. The atmosphere. Yeah. Yeah, the black and white aesthetic fits for what the story looks like they're trying to tell. Correct. But I always, there's certain films that where you see black and white like a... I know what you're trying to do here. <laughs> yeah, you think because it's <laughs> trying black to get and one white. up on me. <laughs> yeah, I see. I'm not going to go back to the Schindler's List well, but Schindler's List. Oh, that was perfect in black and white because the dress was red. What's a film recently that came out in black and white? Roma. Roma, yeah. See, I didn't think Roma needed the black and white. I guess because it's a memory. Yeah. If he's like, I don't know, <laughs> he has a memory of a dog. <laughs> that movie was straight cheeks. What? what? I hated that movie, actually. You're straight cheeks. I feel like you'd be a Roma guy. No, I, I didn't enjoy it Because your too much. taste is very... It's the black and white. Nash looked at it. It's like, we have we don't have to do this anymore. We have technology. Yeah. What's going on here? That color. <laughs> Why nah. didn't... Uh, well, yeah, let's not get into Roma. Yeah, but we'll, we'll off the air. I kind of want to, though. Or if you want to tweet at me, we can talk. <laughs> it, it just wasn't that good. It's kind of like, ah. Uh, you know what movie... So, all right. we'll no, get, no, go we'll ahead. We'll do what this. Movie? What movie? Pootie Tang? No, I was talking about Shape of Water the other day. Oh, that's a good and, one, And though. somebody was just like, that movie was awful. And I kind of just had the same reaction to what you... I kind of just wanted to swing. See, because I feel like I'm very good... Yeah. Aaron's taste, it's easy pr- to predict. What is it? Yours as well. Predict me. Just, I don't know. You mostly like good movies. Amy Adams. People with the best taste just like everything. That's okay. That's my... You know, a guy like... Uh, not a guy, like my sister. She has a very specific taste, and it's so hard to pinpoint. So when you when you take her to a movie, get ready for a battle after it. Because we came out of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and she said that was the worst movie I've ever seen in my oh life. Boy. My mom told me she didn't like it. And I was it. like, like, why didn't you like it? She's like, malfunctioning. very long. She's like, Brad Pitt, horrible. Leonardo, terrible. Worst acting I've ever seen. Not funny. Too long. I was like, <laughs> oh, man. I, I, I looked oh, no. at her, and I was like, I'm not ready for this for this right now. <laughs> Let's just go Jesus. home. Isn't she a big Tarantino fan, too? Yeah, she loves Tarantino. That's crazy. But she, you know, what a weird kid. 
All right, let's move on here. All right. The lighthouse does look fantastic. And this guy, if if you haven't seen The Witch, if you're listening at home and you haven't seen The Witch, The Witch is one of the best horror movies of all time. It's one of the best movies of that year. So go see it. This is only his second film? It's only his second film. He's out yeah. here now cooking up heat. Uh, where could I watch that if I wanted to? The, uh, Witch? the library, it? maybe? No, I own it. I'll let you borrow it. Be watching that tonight. Um, yeah? Yes. Ooh. What, uh, hopefully it gets more work after this. I was thinking of like Andrew, uh, Alex Garland. Two two great films. Oh, yeah, but Ex sometimes Machina filmmakers. He he seems like a guy that's making movies that he wants to make. So they take time in between their movies. Shane Carruth directed one of my favorite movies of all time, Upstream Color. That was six years ago, and his movie's been in production. Hell, The Modern Ocean supposed to be Keanu Reeves, Tom Holland. It's supposed to be about modern piracy that on was international a time. waters. Those are t- those two actors' stock couldn't be higher, especially but Keanu. Those directors, it's like, oh, if I, if I don't have the right script or I have to rework it, and they take forever. Terrence Malick, when he dropped two films, then took a 20-year break and came back with a thin red line. So that happens. Pretty badass. Or they just get their bag and bye 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 That's it. <laughs> the super bag. Get your money, and that's it. All right, let's move on to the next story here. We have a little MCU news. So, Nash, you can take this one. Okay. Black Panther 2, Neymar is rumored to be the villain. How do you feel about that? Oh, my God. It's nuts. Yeah? Oh, crazy You're stuff. You're a big Neymar guy. Oh, yeah. It's a great soccer player. <laughs> That's good. That's good stuff. Thank you. But this is interesting because Neymar, as we know, he's he's like Marvel's Aquaman. Okay. He's basically Aquaman. I think he came first, though. Ooh. I don't know. So what... Aquaman's a poser. Aquaman is a ripoff, yes. You could pick any character and be like, oh, Marvel did the first, DC did it first. They're just ripping everything off. Happens each other. a lot, yeah. yeah. But this is interesting because it, they're going to introduce Atlantis in the MCU. And there have been points in the comics where they go to war against each other, Wakanda and well, Atlantis. He's an anti-hero, right? Not like Aquaman, just a hero hero? Right, yeah. He's a bit of a... I don't know if you would call him Machiavelli, um, like a Machiavelli-type character. Because I don't know much about him in the comics anyway. But I know that these two nations, I guess Atlantis is a nation at this point, they have their problems. It's kind of like uh, Themyscira and uh, Atlantis. Yeah, right. And I guess Wakanda and Atlantis kind of had that same dynamic. But uh, yeah, obviously referenced in Infinity War when uh, they say, what is it, like earthquakes off the coast of Africa? Okay. That could be a nice end game, you mean? Yeah, what did I say? Infinity War. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. that's about right. So that's a nice little tease there. And Yeah, I guess they do have to border each other. Well, and it's going to be, sense. what, like four or five years until we see this? And yeah, yeah, four? 2022 at the earliest. So I hope they go with, I hope they make him, well, if if it's in Africa, I wonder how they're going to cast. Is it going to rain? <laughs> Is that the words of the song? I guess it rains down in Africa. Yeah, so I, I'm wondering who they could get for this role. If they'll go with an unknown, if they'll get an established actor. Maybe they just get Momoa. <laughs> That'd be funny. <laughs> Do you think they'll do like the same type of Atlantis or underwater as I Aquaman? hope not. I hope it's underwater, but it's above water. You know? Okay. Like they go into like a bubble. Yeah. But they can also swim in the water. Well, they did have a bubble in... They did. Kind of, right? I, I just... It looked amazing the way that they were able to do that because they tried to shoot Aquaman 10, 15 years ago and they were like, we just can't do it underwater. But I like it. I like the idea of a mixture of a modern city that's just underwater, but it looks like air rather yeah. than water. So It's always weird to try to what looks the best, what looks realistic, what will be realistic, the physics of it all. I mean, we're at the point where I would appreciate an attempt to make it as realistic as possible, but at the same time, it's fucking... DMCU, where aliens just came and snapped away half yeah. the population. So there is some room to kind of wiggle there. I'm interested in this. It's a while off, and this is just a rumor, so it might not happen, but it makes sense. I don't really know too many other Black Panther villains. Yeah, me so. neither. There's also a rumor that Craven the Hunter is going to appear in Spider Man 3, and he's going to be from Wakanda. That he's going to be part of an exiled Wakandan tribe, which to me, that would be incredible. Isn't, Cra- isn't he Sony? No, they, uh, well. Spider Man Sony. I know, but aren't they keeping a lot of their characters to keep their own make their own little Sony verse? I'm not sure if Craven is going to be a character on that list. It's like Craven's off off the table. It's a hell of a name. Craven the Hunter. Craven the Hunter. Yeah. Holy shit. So he's got a comic, Craven's Last Hunt. He's like a big game hunter and his big game is Spider Man. <laughs> which is hilarious. And in the at the end of the last Spider Man, they reveal his identity to the world. So everybody kinda knows who he is. Spoiler. But if you listen to this, you've seen Spider-Man. That would be interesting. Uh, we also have other rumors here that 
they're going to introduce Galactus and Tyrant as villains in Phase 4. And Tyrant... Who? Yeah, I don't really know much about him. He's uh, he's another cosmic character. I don't know much about him either. He's a weird guy. Tyrant? Tyrant? I met him before, yeah. Whack job. Whack job. Well, yeah. there we go. That's why he's going to be the villain. Yes. Galactus. Are you familiar with Galactus? He's a Fantastic Four. He's like a giant. He's got a huge helmet. Uh, I think so. He's kind of cute. Did you see Vice? Then no, if he's cute, no. I'm sorry? Did you see Vice? Vice? Mm-hmm. No. Oh. Dick Cheney movie? No, I did not see that. He's referenced in that. They, yeah, they call Dick Cheney Galactus. It's another badass name, too. Yeah, Galactus. it is. He's a big guy, right? He's huge. He yeah. eats planets. That's what he does. He walks around. He's like, oh, that planet looks good. I'll have a little bit of that. Dip it in the sun. Ten-piece planet. Fat fuck. <laughs> He's uber-eating planets. Yeah. Just getting them. What, uh... <laughs> Straight up DoorDash and Jupiter. <laughs> yeah. Jupiter, yeah, you think? He oh, was that's in... a big meal. Yeah, that's, that's a big, big boy, boy meal. He was in Rise of the Silver Surfer, right? Yes, he was. That was the second Fantastic Four movie, but he's a giant cloud. Yeah. Well, so they else? took a character, Nash, that <laughs> he's a humanoid, giant, planet-eating villain. But he looks like a giant-ass person, but he's just floating through space. I gotta see his parents. His parents are actually very small. It's ironic. It's one of those cases where it's just a giant and a baby. What the hell? It's weird. But in the Fantastic Four movie, they just made him a giant fucking cloud. It was just a cloud. It was an evil cloud. Like the dirty bubble? Like the dirty... <laughs> But with no face. Just a voice. He was just a, yeah. not so it was yet. Lion King. No, he was like communicating. Does he have a voice? He was like communicating with the Silver Surfer in some weird way. I don't know. Maybe this means the Silver Surfer has got to be in Phase 4. He needs to be. He's like one of the biggest characters left, right? That haven't been rumored or... Yeah, and people love him. So the comic fans, hardcore comic fans, love the Silver Surfer. And obviously he couldn't couldn't be in Infinity War, but he has such a big role in that comic. But... Fantastic Four, Galactus, Silver Surfer, it's all good news. Well, these big villains now that they got from Fox and Sony, maybe, uh, or whatever they did, they got um, Galactus and, whatchamacallit, uh, the uh, guy. Annihilus? Oscar Isaac. Oh, Apocalypse. Apocalypse, probably like the two biggest ones, and Doctor Doom, but he's more of a Fantastic Four, but I think you can introduce them, these characters, in like an X-Men movie or a Fantastic Four movie, and then as a tease and do that long build up they did for Thanos because I don't want them to just kind of like uh, X-Men Apocalypse here's this big bad t- uh, crazy threat and then he's gone they kind of did that with Thanos as well they got away with it because they made that first movie so much about Thanos but, but they I, sprinkled it in he was in Guardian like they but I hope the put, big villain has more hands on yeah rather than behind the scenes and he got two two and a half hour movies Thanos he did. And even before that, he was a big part of Guardians, and he was sprinkled in and tease in other films, too. You don't have to have him Galactus in, you know, too many stuff, but tease him, have the threat looming, and kind of do the same thing, because... Well, even there were rumors that Thanos was going to be the villain of Guardians, too. I would have liked something like that. And then into Infinity War? Yeah. Just give him a... I, I don't think that they should be afraid to play their villains equally to their heroes when it comes to some of these films. Yeah. As, because I, Thanos is, I think, the best character in the entire thing, and he only really is in those two movies. But maybe make Galactus more involved in some of the other stories, rather than... And, you know, they did tease Thanos progressively, and it worked out well for them, obviously. Box office, the movies are great. But maybe have the villains have something more to do, maybe more screen time. I, th- I felt that that could have... As much as I love Thanos and Gamora's relationship in that movie, but maybe a, a previous movie with them. That looks like it could have been a Guardians 2 arc. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. they mentioned that. That's very much Nebula's struggle with Thanos and Gamora and that fucked up dynamic that they have as a family. So. But yeah, th- this is good news. Let's move on to something else here. The Irishman trailer. Another great trailer. Yeah, you liked it? Yeah. This was so good. How did you think about, What did you think of the de-aging? De-aging looks good. Mm-hmm. He looks like... A little bit older than the Goodfellas era. Yeah. Robert De Niro. What do you think, Nash? I thought it looked pretty uh, interesting. I might be a little off here, but it's something to do with JFK and... Jimmy Hoffa. Yeah, Jimmy Hoffa and all that stuff. So I'm definitely interested in seeing this. Um, yeah, I don't know much about it, what De Niro's... I guess De Niro's a hitman, right? Yeah, he's a hitman, and he was involved with the Hoffa disappearance or whatever. Yeah, the Teamsters. I know that's what Hoffa, he was the head of the Teamsters Union. Yeah. But and obviously he had connections to a whole bunch of organized crime organizations. Honestly, I could watch. And Joe Al Pacino's Hoffa, right? I believe so. Yeah. I think he's the one that like calls and says, like, you know, yeah, Pacino your friend is. talks a lot. Joe Pesci, man. He's yeah. back. I could watch him and De Niro 
they could be in wheelchairs and it would still be <laughs> so entertained to uh entertained entertaining enter I, I would be entertained oh jesus christ this coffee is very strong um i would be very entertained to see what kind of shenanigans they get into like they're great yeah and this is his first movie in years yeah dragged him out of retirement said you're coming back I told my brother-in-law about this movie, about the de-aging technology, and he's like, if he had all these actors, why doesn't he just make a movie about them when they're older? I was like, no, most of them are still older. Yeah. It's De Niro. It's an older cast, so that's always, you know, are they really going to be into it? But I think Pesci, he wouldn't come back unless he was really, uh, he really thought it was a good role, and especially that relationship he has in Scorsese. And this is like his first mob movie since Hugo, so that was, that was a joke. <laughs> I just ignored it. I was like... <laughs> <laughs> what? Hugo wasn't. No, yeah. No. I was going to say silence at first, but I figured I'd go back a little bit further. Mm. What has been well, his you know recent movie? <laughs> silence, Wolf of Wall Street, Hugo. His most recent mom movie? Departed, right? Yeah. Yeah, The Departed. Um, yeah, it's, it's Scorsese, so I mean, if anything he does, I'm going to be watching. And it's on a select theater release on Netflix, probably kind of, I would assume, by Oscar season. Mm-hmm. Kind of like Roma was December, right? Yeah, around fall. That makes sense. So is it going to get like a small release in select theaters and then release on Netflix a little later? Yeah, maybe. I hope they do it kind of simultaneously because if you're going to watch it on Netflix, you're going to watch it on Netflix. Yeah. The theater release is obviously so it can be nominated for Academy Awards and for people who still appreciate that experience. So He was the one that was bitching about movies. No, that's Netflix. Spielberg. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought it was Scorsese. I'm sorry. Scorsese seems kind of cool with it. Yeah. Well, he doesn't really My have a choice, Scorsese. does he? Well, his the rights for the movie were sold to Netflix from whatever studio was going to make it. Yeah. So, yeah, no, he doesn't. Well, I, I think it's good because when you have a director like that where he says, I'll make your Netflix movie, but you have to put it in theaters, maybe that will set a precedent. Yeah. But then you have lesser directors who their movies get sold to Amazon or Netflix and they never come out in theaters, and that's frustrating for them because – they build the movie. They make the movie to be a theatrical experience. Mm -hmm. Garland said that about um, Annihilation. So it wasn't Annihilation. It was sold off quickly. No, in the UK. UK was a Netflix. Yeah. Right, and that's kind of unfortunate because there are things that you know, the aspect ratio, special effects that aren't going to pop as much on a television. Sounds too. Yeah, right. But I'm still excited for this movie. Yeah, it's a three, three-headed dog, and then you got Scorsese, you know, running the show. It's Why not best. want to watch it, you know? You're a Scorsese fan? Yeah, I could dabble in some Scorsese. Favorite Scorsese? Departed. I love The Departed. Departed is fucking amazing. I was thinking about my favorite movies the other day, and I was surprised of... Not surprised, but yeah, I kind of underappreciate it as one of my favorites. But it's up there. I mean, I've never seen Wolf of Wall Street, the full thing. I've seen about half of it. And you then, might like it. Yeah. I mean, I liked it from uh, from what I saw. His movies are very rewatchable. Whether it's yeah. Departed or Goodfellas, you can turn it on whenever you want, and you're right into it. And you pretty much, every time I do at least, I just have to watch it to the end no matter what, unless I have to go somewhere. So he's definitely one of my favorite directors. He's made two of my favorite movies, Departed and Goodfellas. And Wolf of Wall Street's always, I don't like it as much as those films, but it's always a fun watch. Turn it on. Goodfellas is the shortest long movie ever. Yeah. That movie flies by. I've never seen a movie more well-paced than Goodfellas. That's before you know it. He's making the 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 pasta for his family. He's running around being chased by helicopters. Yeah. He's like, Whoa! How, how are we at this stuff. point? Yeah. yeah. Chicken cutlets sliced in. So that's the way his brother likes them. <laughs> that um, that meal looks so good every time does. I do that. I'm like, I need some cutlets. Well, all you need is an like Italian guy with a uh, tank top and a chain, just bare hands, a hairy chest, pushing yeah. some like meat together. <laughs> like, Meats oh, on his chain. On his, yeah. And you know what? It, and you know what it is? He's keyed out too. So he's uh, he's going all over the place. He's locked in, focused. So yeah, that's got to be ten times up, better. Yeah. Well, my you favorite know? scenes involve film. It's like when they're uh, when they're in jail and they're cooking up and they're just <laughs> bringing all this. Is like oh, the jail dinner looks like, great. We got red yeah, wine. Right? It's the like cheese. we got white. Yeah, give me the white too. <laughs> and he's talking about how he makes the meatballs. Oh, you gotta have the pork. Yeah, <laughs> jail like, seemed awesome. What do you say? Like your like, steaks? Like oh, watch medium the rare. Ah, medium rare. An aristocrat. <laughs> yeah, I love that movie. Or the garlic. That's what he said. It's the garlic, right? Yeah. Don't it put too much garlic in there. I don't even put enough no, it's in onions. It. Onion, two, yeah. two whole onions. onions yeah. And even he, in he the slices Godfather. slices the garlic razor thin so it uh, dissolves in the oil. When uh, Clemenza is teaching Michael how to make dinner for a group of 10 men, mm -hmm. he's like, put a little wine. And Sonny's like, what are you doing, man? We're in the middle of a mob war. <laughs> <laughs> You're cooking dinner. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, so the Irishman, the Irishman, Irishman, Irishman trailer looked good. Yeah. Let's move on here to Venom 2, director news, some Venom. rumors. Just before we start this, which one looked better, Lighthouse or Lighthouse? Lighthouse, Lighthouse by yeah, far. Right? Yeah, not even close. So I feel like the Irishman can be bad. Or it could be very much, you know, Scorsese. Not bad, but Scorsese, I don't think he'll ever make an objectively awful movie. But He's pretty consistent. Yeah. yeah. But I could see, like, maybe 60, 70. It might not work for everyone, especially. Yeah, it could be underwhelming. Like, yeah, because it's like De Niro on them. It's like, how many times can you watch him in movies and stuff? It kind of gets played out. Well, I haven't you seen know? De Niro. But that's what... When's the last time you saw him? It's like, wow, that's fucking, that's Robbie D. Silver Linings Playbook, he was good. Yeah. Um, Meet the Parents. <laughs> yeah, it's a long, that's a long time ago. It's 19 was, years ago, he right? He was great in that, though. I got nipples. Oh, yeah. how good was he? Yeah, can you milk me? Right? Can you? <laughs> that's a classic. Yeah. Yeah, Lighthouse, uh, right? Limitless, he was good. What's the movie where he interns for Anne Hathaway? What about Al Pacino, the intern? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tarantino's favorite movie of that year, so. Yeah, no. I, he no. loves that movie. <laughs> I like the movie, too. Um, The guy dares from Workaholics. When was the last time Al Pacino gave a great performance? That's even longer. Don Cacino. Don Cacino. I liked him in uh, Once Upon a Time. Yeah. It's a short scene, but. Yeah. ooh ha! <laughs> We're in the middle of the movie, and my brother-in-law just shouts that <laughs> during the Al Pacino scene. I look, what the fuck is wrong with you? What are you doing? It's on site. <laughs> that is on site. <laughs> yeah. um, you see that video with someone that went to go take their kid to Midsummer, And, like, they're in the middle of the movie. They were recording, and the, him, the dad's just running with the kid out, out of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. What were they thinking? All right, Venom 2, director news. We have a short list of Andy Serkis, Rupert Wyatt, and who was the third? Travis Knight. Travis Knight. Who was rumored to do a Guardians 3 before Gunn came back. And he did Bumblebee. And I like Bumblebee. And he did Kubo and the Two Strings. Did he? Yeah, that's awesome. Travis Knight. And his dad he is did. Phil Knight, CEO of Nike. <laughs> really? Yeah. What a family. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to see Andy Serkis take this for Venom 2. I was going to, because Tom Hardy is the one that, like rumored at it, and then he took down the post or whatnot. He put it on Instagram, Instagram right? Instagram, yeah. yeah. And I was, you know, going to ask you guys, how would you guys feel if it was him? It's interesting because Venom, a lot of people don't like it. It made so much money. Him. I like a it. A lot of people like them, like it. They made this movie that's it's not a great movie, but now it looks like they're they're trying to get a serious director to maybe make this what it was supposed to be an R-rated horror film. But now there's talk about crossover with Spider-Man. Circus to me would be the best choice because. I mean, Even you, though the Jungle Book, his Jungle Book movie wasn't great, it stunk. It stunk, right? But maybe that's his warm up because he's obviously a guy that understands the process of filmmaking. I mean, he's so ingrained in the motion capture performance, so he'll be able to assist Tom Hardy in that respect. But if if I had to pick one, I I don't know why Circus just feels right because I just love him as an artist. He's got to play a character. That's the thing. He has to put himself. That I almost. That's why I want him to direct it because I want to see Circus in the movie. Who was movie he in Mowgli? Somebody. I forgot who he was in Mowgli. I mean, Mowgli wasn't. I guess it was fine. But I think the Jungle Book that came out two years previously was just so much better that when you compare the two, you're like, yeah, I didn't really like. Mowgli. Yeah, it's a it's a matter of I came out first. So yeah. he had a bad first half. Go back yeah, the animal locker room and I made mean, another movie. Right, brush it off. Yeah, I, I didn't it. see this other film, Breathe or something. I've never seen that. But all these guys, Rupert Wyatt. The last big movie he did was Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Um, there's another actor too, not Travis Knight. It was um. He did the yeah he did the first one right and then. Yeah, Matt Reeves did the, the other two. First two. The second two. There was like, another. The first one was so good too. Oh, the first one's great with mm-hmm. James Franco. Yeah, it's really good. But Travis Knight, he's a great filmmaker. So this is promising. Sony's saying, hey, let's let's try and make a great movie this time. Yeah, I mean people. Venom does have his contingent of fans. I didn't like I'm, it. I'm one of them. Yeah. I didn't like it, but I could see why. It, it's it's there. You know, something is there. So if you put a new director in to get a nice script going. Woody Harrelson's coming back. Yeah, introduce Carnage and stuff like that. It, it could be a very well. Uh, could they set be, up Woody Harrelson at the end. Yeah. That's fucking awesome. Yeah. It could be a, a hell of a good an actor. sequel. Uh, people have been wanting to see Carnage for since the Raimi spider man so. Yeah. So that's good. We finally get to see him. Have you guys ever thought about taking the reins on, like, directing a movie? No. Like a superhero movie? No. Because you guys have great fucking it. ideas. Yeah, but it's that's it's Good so ideas, hot. but there's no way I could ever put it into motion on a screen. It's also like you're putting it into a mic. That's like when people, like, online write, rewrite stuff, and it's like, oh, they should have done this. It's like, yeah, you can have an idea, but there's no possible way you could act, ever make something as good as something that you didn't like. Like, even, like... 
the worst movies that people criticize. It's like Game of Thrones season eight, perfect example. People are like, oh, should have done this, this, and this, and this. If they were in charge, they wouldn't be able to pr- pr- convey that onto screen. Yeah, it's, it's also hard. hindsight. Fair reasoning. It's like Monday morning quarterbacking. Yeah, what they always say. Hindsight is twenty twenty. But I feel like you guys would have better ideas. I mean, you guys are just spitting facts even before the movie is made. Yeah, but if somebody was like, first of all, you could give me two hundred million dollars and I couldn't make a five million dollar budget am, movie. Am I giving you guys too much credit? Yes, here? you're giving him too much credit. Me, you know. It's like a thirty percent cook- chance. You're cooking something. Did you see right? that Stranger Things intro? Did you, I mean, come on, you see my my transition? That shit was fresh, <laughs> so fresh. No, if you gave me two hundred million dollars, you'd never see me again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This co- uh, yeah. This question. Let's go to fan questions here. That's most of the topics that we have. So, I saw one actually. It was um, it was going around Twitter. It was something that they were a fan question. They reanimated the opening scene of Infinity War where Thanos goes to kill Loki and it goes through him and Loki's like on a spaceship it's like oh got you again it's like oh this is what should have happened no it shouldn't have <laughs> well the uh, the MCU and there's a line and there's a line in it that he says oh fuck keep going oh, I gotta find this because it actually it, it, the MCU has a problem their fans with they never want any of these characters to die the um the fan base the section of the fan base that is that can't get over Iron Man dying at the end of Endgame. It's it, these characters never die in comic book movies. In the comics, they never die. They always come back. If if you can make a story where it fits, where he's willing to sacrifice himself, and that death hits the way it did, then you have to understand that these these characters are still human at the end of the day. So mm-hmm. the way that fans bitch about Loki dying, how many times has Loki died and they brought him back? That's that's why I love the joke that Thanos makes with the line, you know, no resurrections this time. But let's go to fan questions here. We have one from Cowboy Stannis at Cowboy Stannis. Did you find it? No, I'm just saying, like, the dialogue they rewritten and everyone's like, oh, this is how it should have went. The dialogue was so bad. It was Thanos. They, like, redid his dialogue, and he said the same word to end a sentence twice in a row. And that's just bad writing. <laughs> yeah. It was just like, ugh. You know, even, yeah, whatever. All right, this question here from Cowboy Stannis. Would you rather never watch a movie again or have both legs amputated? I don't need legs. Kind of like walking. <laughs> no movies. How about shows? Got to watch shows. Yeah, shows. I'm you more of a show guy anyway. Yeah, yeah. All right, yeah. I'll keep my so legs. So you t- you're keeping the yeah, legs? Yeah, fuck movies. Yeah, I'll, I'll wheel it. Fucking Vin Diesel and shit. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I'll cut my legs off. Watch a few uh, movies. You know what? I'm just going to cut my legs off no matter <laughs> what. <laughs> No, I won't. What about you? I don't know. That's you gonna sleep on that one? Yeah, <laughs> I like movies. You also like your life. <laughs> yeah, <right? so>, I <laughs> don't know. <laughs> this question here from Leon at not even gonna attempt it. Who of you guys would win in a cooking showdown? Like if Gordon Ramsay challenged you to cook something for him. A cooking showdown. What I- are we making? So I'm, I only have like I can do like two good things pretty decently, but I can't do like oh make this. What are they? Fish. You can make fish. No, I can't. That's why you I said can't make fish. No. I, what I don't can know. you make? I'm gonna rattle off it. some things. Let me see if you can cook them. Okay. Chicken cutlets. Yes. Eggs. Yes. Um. Do you know how to make any kind of sauce so- like alavaca sauce from scratch? Uh, I know the gist. Okay. Yeah. Um. So what? You can't do fish. What about? Well, steak? I never attempted to do it. Steak, I can make a good steak on the, on the grill. All right, so you're gonna be cooking for me after this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Nash is just naming everything he wants for dinner tonight. <laughs> yeah. Can you make steak? That's exactly eggs, what I was doing. Yeah. Sauce. I want it all into one too. Okay. Well, in, in college, in my we had an apartment with a couple of my friends, and I was like, I was the meat guy. And my other friend was the, the meat guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> my other friend <laughs> was, was the meat s- boy over there. My other friend was the sides guy, and the other kid just the waited. slim jim, huh? Yeah. So we'd all get stuff <laughs> like we'd all. We go to the store. We just get meat a bunch. boy and Slim Jim. That's yeah. a spinoff. <laughs> yeah, the just a bunch of meat, meat boys. That's what we would eat every day. So I'd make, I'd make chicken, steaks, pork chops. Are you a good Where's cook? Where's the meat? Eh, I could follow a YouTube c- cooking tutorial. I'm good at that too. I can follow like a recipe pretty well. Some people will like follow a recipe verbatim, and it'll still come out like shit. Yeah. For some reason, I'm a good recipe guy. I made a hell of a grilled cheese the other day. <sighs> tomato slices, bowl of tomato soup. Have I doubled ever, up on the tomato. Have you ever in cooked? the summer? In the, yeah, 
It's the AC's cranking, man. It's grilled cheese, <laughs> grilled cheese season all year. Yeah, yeah I never got true. that. Like people are like, oh, certain true. foods like you can't eat during a season. It's like if you're inside in a climate controlled area, you can we had this do whole talk on the podcast, though. We did. Yeah, yeah, we did. No, grilled cheese is definitely the best in the winter. It hits different. Yeah, it does hit different. But it still hits in the summer. That shit do hit different. Just real quick before we go to the next question, you know, Gordon Ramsay, people would like tweet at him about like, uh, oh, look at my meal, and he would like <laughs> shit on it and everything. Yeah. So one day, I. He, I was just so insulted about things he was saying to people. I don't know. I hate him. I hate Gordon Ramsay for some reason. He's just this egomaniacal prick that thinks he <laughs> can cook up shit and make a, a five-star meal. So I just sent my uh, middle finger. I said, I just cooked this up for you. How do you fucking like this one? <laughs> did he respond? No. Uh, no. I wish he, did. he never responded. And because like it was like off one of his tweets it like really didn't go out into the thing so I deleted it because it didn't get any likes either so <laughs> I was really embarrassed but Why do you, just got a negative one you do retweet I, I feel like if, my, if I, I send a tweet and it doesn't perform I'm like yeah that's there no with that one everyone I, sees it later and they, that, they like I, it I usually don't but that one I did because it was a middle finger too and it was just like I was trying too hard I'll bro. delete a tweet if it has a spelling mistake <laughs> yes I'll yeah, do okay. that okay and I also tweeted out something once that was so depressing and nobody liked it, so I was like, "Yeah, let me just get rid of this." <laughs> yeah, um, but Gordon Ramsay, I like him. That guy's such like, an I ass like clown. I like those type of coaches. He's such a dick. Well, he's I like a, I like when he's with the kids. He's always nice to that's, the kids. Yeah. Gordon Ramsay loves the kids. You ever see that with the Yankees prospects versus the older? Uh, he's like, "What <laughs> are you?" And he says it to like uh, like an Jay Hat, which he's like an idiot <laughs> sandwich, and it'll be like Glaber Torres, and he's like. Oh, what you I'm make? not leaving here until you smile. <laughs> yeah. They do that for Game of Thrones. It's uh, Sandor Clegane. It's like Gordon Ramsay to uh, children, and it's him with like Sansa and Arya, and it's like Gordon Ramsay for adults, and it's uh, the Hound. Any man who dies with a clean sword, I'll rape his fucking corpse. <laughs> That's Gordon Ramsay. I like him. You know, he's, he's yelling at everybody. That he's guy. trying to. He cares. That guy stinks on it, ice. It, it's caring. I like John Taffer when he shuts shuts it down, and rescues some bars. I've never seen Bar Rescue. <laughs> it's pretty That's entertaining. Yeah. He just goes in. The bars always suck. I mean, well, Bourdain was the man. Baby. Bourdain is the... And he does that, too, but with the adults, he's like... Um, Paula Dean. <laughs> Paula Dean, baby. Like, he starts out, he yells at the, <laughs> he yells at the bar owners and, like, gives them the business, and at the end, he's like, all right, let me talk to you guys here. And he, right. and he gives you, like, the soft-spoken, like, pep talks. Like, it's not going to work unless you guys make it work. Is there anything <laughs> better than the hard-ass who then gives you the soft-spoken? Yeah. It's like... It butters you up. He's manip- He's good copping and bad copping you yeah. at the same time. Yeah. It's unbelievable. It's like, when the, talking, it's like in the movies when the strict dad, like... No, he was, he was just one person. We had a coach, a basketball coach, who was literally Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> With adults. With adults, yeah. yeah adult it's, like, time. it's like a movie when he's like a strict dad does something sweet. You're like, ah. Oh. You had a heart of gold this whole time. Well, I like the Twitter, the tweet of "There's nothing more pure than the relationship between a grumpy dad and the pet that he didn't want." Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. Um, this yeah, question yeah, here. Fun. From Pat Phillips at Pat underscore Phillips ninety three, if you could pick any, if you could pick any genre for Quentin Tarantino to cover for his last movie, what would you want it to be? For me, it would be sci fi. I would love to see him do a sci fi, whatever idea comes to his head or whatever idea he's seen in another movie, and then he can make it his own. That's what I would like him to do. Who, who was the director? Tarantino. Tarantino. I mean, the Star Trek. I'm not really too interested in Star Trek, but I would, what would make me interested is if he did it. But from like my personal preference. I don't know. I kind of maybe tackle like a horror, like a straight horror movie. That would be interesting. He does yeah. have horror elements in his films, but if it was uh, more true to the horror genre and stuck more to that, I think that would be interesting and still add in his like comedic flair and yeah. stuff like that um, and his Tarantinoisms. But I think that would be pretty cool. I too. couldn't have said it any better myself. Horror would that be awesome. This, that is the same exact answer I had. All right, this question here from Jessica Maggie at Lady. Jessica. But he's so he's so he's so he does such a great job of mixing genres too. It's kind of hard to want him to, to say I want him to stick to a certain yeah, thing because that's like the appeal one. is he'll have our aspects and then a comedic aspect and then a dramatic aspect and he'll blend that all so well. So this question here from Jessica Maggie thoughts on the Big Little Lies finale. Jessica, that's for you guys. Oh, man, I did not like the fat. Fa- uh, oh, excuse me. I did not like the finale. Um, Whoa. I thought it could have been better. The, the whole season was great. Season two, I liked better than season one. I love the finale. I wasn't a fan of the finale. I'm a big courthouse drama guy. So I put him in a Judge courtroom. Judge Judy? 
Well, no, that I'm I'm talking about how it ended, like the actual oh, the yeah, last and, scene. And th- because if you're talking about that, how fucking epic was that? No, that was awesome. Yeah, it was I, sick. I, well, the last scene, I mean, it does, I guess, either lend to a season three or because I, th- I think season one is supposed to be it, but then everyone's like, "Wow, this is really good." <laughs> let's, yeah, let's, let's season see, one was see where we can go with this, and season two probably not as good as season one because season one had that intrigue, that mystery to it. Where season two is more of, we have a problem, let's see how this ends. Yeah, it's like five different problems all in one. Yeah. Um, it depends. If that's if they don't do a season three and they leave it open-ended, I feel like that would be interesting. But I think it does lend to maybe a possible season three. So, uh, And we'll see how it plays out. And then retrospectively, we can look back at that last scene and be like, oh, yeah, I liked where this was going. Or, eh, maybe they should Favorite character? It. Oh, man. Mine's Renata, without a doubt. Yeah. Yeah, like Laura Dern was unbelievable in this season. Also, good. Celeste is good. Madeline's yeah. good. I like the kids too. There was a lot of kids this this season. Yeah, I like. I like you see those kids actors. in like the beginning. Yeah, young of... Sheldon. Oh, Young Sheldon. You see the kids that um like in a, in the theme song when they come up to the camera yeah. and they do something goofy. Yeah, it's fucking. Awesome. We should have that like nerd suit. Yeah. All of us recorded. No. Well, that's what I didn't like about <laughs> season two. Intro, the intro is awesome. In season one, the, the, the adults did that too. And yeah. This, this this one they didn't do it. They're just walking on the beach. Yeah. Chilling. They're all friends. Yeah. Now, Laura Dern was really good, and Nicole Kimmon was good. I think. Your girl Meryl was good. Yeah, she was. She's going to win an Emmy for sure. Guest actress, maybe. Because you could do, for that show, you could do, uh, so as people are saying, like, oh, how we want to give them all the awards. Like, how do we do that? And you could do a lead, Nicole Kidman supporting uh, Reese Witherspoon and guest Meryl Streep. Yeah, well... The season two was great. I just didn't like the very ending of the episode. Fair enough. This question here from Soy Man at B Arctic. Cohen Brothers versus Tarantino. In a fight? Well, it's two against one. <laughs> yeah, that's what so, I was going to say. Come on, Soy Man. You just answered your own question here. Well, no. how tall is Tarantino? <laughs> he's got to be 5'10, 5'11. Hey. No, in your scale, he's 6'5. <laughs> yeah, where's stats? Uh, stats? No, he's. Tarantino looks like a tall guy. He's got to be like six six foot. Did you see him on set of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood smoking Hans Landa's pipe? No, that's awesome. I, it's the greatest thing I've ever seen in my life. You see the thing with... He's six one. A big boy. You see the thing with Brad Pitt? No. And uh, Lana uh, Durham? Durham? Lena Dunham? Lena Dunham. Laura Dunham, whatever the fucking name is. Laura. She like gave like him like an awkward like half kiss. Ooh. It's a really weird picture. Yeah, it's I, I had to shower after it from the cringe. <laughs> it was bad. It was very bad. That's like when uh, who, someone hugged Jerry Seinfeld and he was like... Uh, Kesha. Yeah. She <laughs> wanted to hug him and yeah. he was like, nope. Nope. <laughs> That's what it's mean. Uh, as far as films are concerned, I think Tarantino, I I think it would be closer to you. You like a lot of Coen Brothers movies. Coen and, I, Brothers. and I do too, but not as... I think True Grit's probably one of my favorites. But I'm not a big burn after reading... Hell Caesar, I didn't really like too much. The Big Lebowski. Okay, I like that movie, but it's not. Racing Arizona. Hmm. I don't know. I, no Country for Old Men. Yes, I love those movies. I, I don't think Tarantino can even touch the Coen Brothers. You don't think so? No. I like they're more like Fargo. Oh man, Fargo. Yeah, keep going. I'm saying Fargo, True Grit, and Ooh. what? Which we'll call it. No Country for Old Men are probably my favorite, but I don't know. That's a good matchup, but they make so many other ones. I don't. I think they have more misses than Tarantino for sure. They do, yeah. Well, in order to hit, you got to take the bat off uh, the shoulder. Did you right? see Buster Scruggs yet? No, I didn't. Yeah. That was pretty good. I liked it. But again, pretty good. There's a lot of Score. yeah. I liked it. Burn after reading, yeah. Yeah, No Country for Old Men is. I don't think Tarantino's ever made a movie better than that, and that's not even my favorite Coen Brothers. Or it is. The Big Lebowski. Yeah. I, I do like the Big Lebowski, but when I when I first saw it, I was like, "This is the movie everyone's talking about, like cult classic, everyone's favorite." And I'm like, "Yeah, it's good." You that's know, they're it. making a spinoff. For who? Big Lebowski. But who's who's being spun off? John Turturro's character. Oh, <laughs> which is weird. Yeah, he's funny. I, I like know, John Turturro. Hmm. Why are you, why are you touching that movie all this time after? That is my money. Mr. That is my mother. <laughs> the funniest scene in Big Lebowski is when he's doing the memorial for Steve Buscemi, and he just turns it into a speech about Vietnam. <laughs> it's like those I gotta go back men. and watch that movie again. <laughs> That's one of the funniest movies of all time. That movie uh, made me want to go bowling. 
Like bowling is fucking awesome. Bowling is awesome. Oh, I'm so bad at bowling. John Goodman is so good. There's like I mean, they're all good, two but. weeks, like a couple summers ago, we just all bowled for a while. Like, oh, let's just go bowling. We're bowling like fucking four times for a week. Me, Nash, and Ted a couple months ago did a post bowling podcast. That was fun. Post podcast bowling. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> we did a pre podcast bowling. Yeah, but pre bow pulled a. Uh... No, you said it wrong again. You went bowling after you podcasted. I know. I was just trying to move on. Mm. He, he pulled the um, <laughs> we did white a... man can't jump on me. No, I did not. Oh, I stink. I'm not that good. I am the most inconsistent Bowl bowler. Get out of here. I no, think I, the, the first, other day I went bowling, bowl I bowled an 82. I bowled an 82 the other day. I did the same thing when I went bowling with uh, with my nephew and his friends. First first time I bowl, I do a stri- I make make a strike, do a strike, get a strike. And they're like, oh, oh bowls bow. <laughs> He's a big time bowler. He's over here acting like he doesn't bowl. B- bowler, right? <laughs> bowl, Oliver. Uh, then the next time I go, I gutter. I'm a very inconsistent athlete when it comes to it. Actually, I learned how to do the spin. Teddy taught me to do that, and the curve. Teddy's a phenomenal bowler. Yeah. Teddy's the and first still, time he I'm went. I'm not that good, but I just feel like if you have a if you have a, if you have a curve, people think you're good. If you have the curve, yeah. You anticipate a strike. I mean, time. he's grinding on on the gutter the whole time. The gutter, he yeah. fucking tiptoes like yeah. Dwayne Wade on Straight the Straight up Jersey turn baseline. <laughs> Just grinding right up on it, and then whoop, see ya. So, yeah, the Cohen brothers are better. <laughs> Teddy is a good bowler. It's annoying, right? <laughs> he's, no, like, he's, like, really good. No, he's yeah. very, yeah, he is. And But I hate how he tries to coach you. No, See, I when, love when it. he when yeah. he no because he he's, me the curve. he's not a show him the curve. He's just not a good coach. Like he's one of those guys that can do it but can't teach you how to do it. You know, I bowling, golf. He, I, I think maybe it's just me. He gets very aggressive. I think no, I think that's a you and Teddy thing. Yeah, because I find Teddy to be a, a solid bowling coach. Yeah. All right, but maybe I think yeah, you I and like Teddy just Teddy hate cares. each other. It, when he coaches me, I feel like this is a man who cares about how my bowling progresses. No, I think but when Teddy and Aaron me. try to coach you, you get. Defensive. Oh yeah, because who the fuck are they to tell me what to do? <laughs> you know, I'm gonna figure it out on my own. I'll which never, I never forget have, when but... Aaron said, "I forget who said it to who." One of you said to the other person that they had no basketball IQ. I said that to Aaron, and it was just an absolute blowout. You both lost your mind. Yeah, he told me to go. My truck would flip. <laughs> Remember, he said, "I hope your truck flips the next day at work." Yeah. Uh, uh, this question here from Khaleesi <laughs> at Khaleesi underscore Chan. If you could make the perfect Game of Thrones ending, what would it be? Here we go. Nice. Oh, yeah. I know what I said before, but this is the ending. <laughs> this is the definitive perfect Game of Thrones ending. Did you see the script they had released? I would just add 10 more episodes. Yeah. You see the script they released? They're just never end. <laughs> the ending's just never end. I would add end. three more seasons. <laughs> I don't know if it was real, but they showed like a season, the pilot script, I think, and it was just very detailed, and this, the finale script was just surface level dialogue. Uh, yeah. Which, you know. I, I don't like the whole thing about the time that people are speaking on screen going down per season because that makes more sense. There are just more action sequences in the later seasons. There are more characters in the earlier seasons. Exactly. So. That criticism, I don't think you can make because I think season six is still great. But well, I guess we'll eventually review season eight in its entirety, and we'll we'll get into all the things that maybe they could have done differently. But we've we've made the case so many times. So let's go to another question. Well, here. I think there's a difference between what they, you know, saying like pointing out criticisms and just saying, "Oh, if they did what I want. It would be better." There's a fine line there because. I think, you, and like you said before, it's like Monday morning quarterbacking, but I think the main problem, which we've discussed at length, is longer. So if I could redo the final, final season, I would make it two seasons longer. All right, this question here from Nate Dog at N8. Oh, what a name. 313-5660. RIP. Favorite sports, favorite pro sports teams? Yankees, Giants, Knicks. That's really it. I like Man City. Wow. Mm. And the Islanders. I don't watch hockey, but I just am an Islanders fan. Yeah. yeah. Uh, for me, Jets, Islanders, Knicks, Yankees. Which, until the final team I named, you probably think that I hate sports. Which I do. Mm. But the Yankees kind of keep me sane. Well, season's over already. Astros are about to win it. Astros, Dodgers, it's definitely the World Series. Ooh, Zach Ranky, The guy even couldn't pitch in L.A. because he was too scared to be yeah, in the limelight. Yeah, now he's going to Houston. Yeah, yeah but now he's going to be in the And they've been known playoffs. to turn around pitchers there he seems like a houston guy it's yeah. like verlander or Bumgarner. he didn't want to come to new york or anything he would have been perfect if he Granky would have been bad in new york real quick 
Yankees, Knicks, Jets, and I'm not much of a hockey uh, watcher per se, but I do root for the Rangers. All right, this question here from Bree Ann at Untalented Loser. <laughs> oh, my. Come on. God, loser Brianne? with a zero. Jesus, We'll, we'll see what the question is before we... Best Pop-Tart flavor. Yeah, what a loser. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. But yeah, very talented. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but very talented. <laughs> Cherry. I don't like the, like, jam flavors. Is that what's in them? Yeah, it's kind of jammy. It's like, yeah, it's like a jam-type jelly. What do you, you like the chocolate type? I like the brown sugar. S'mores? Yeah, I'm not a big to- Pop-Tarts guy. Toaster Shooter, though, that's my fucking jam. Yeah, I'm not a big, I'm not a big pop cart, uh, pop cart, Jesus. Pop. Pop tart guy. You're not either. a big top part. Top. Toaster Shrew's too much work. <laughs> if I got to unzip something and put the put the icing on it. The icing's tough to get it open. Yeah, properly. it's, and then. It'd be easier if you just yeah, use it. You also need a knife. Yeah, and then it goos out. Yeah, it's, it's, it's too gooing. much. Well, the, the. It's like when people separate the cannoli from the shell. It's make your own cannoli. <laughs> Why? Well, that's a stupid thing. When you they make the fucking cannoli. food. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what is this? Like, restaurants do that. It's like, oh, look, it's a uh, deconstructed whatever. <laughs> it's like, I'm paying, I'm paying for to the, have it constructed. <laughs> this is not Build-A-Bear. Yeah, but like a cannoli is just so simple. Just do it for me. Yeah, exactly. It's, all you have to do is squeeze what the What am I getting out of this by putting the, the cream well, in there? I remember the, a sick thrill by popping cream into the hole. I mean, what? I do like no. popping pimples. <laughs> well, oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, if I see like the Dr. Pimple Popper. No, Ooh. I'm wa- I'm loving that. I can't. Yeah, I can't resist. Can I that. ask you guys something personal? Sorry, to cut you, what would you like to explain? Well, I was just gonna say in the commercials as a kid with Toaster Shootle, like they would do artwork on their Shootle, and then you'd get it in real life, and it would just blop out the icing. But it's it just, does taste better. Just blopping. Yeah. Um, do you guys pick your nose? The, no, the regular. Oh, Let's go a step further. Use baby wipes. I should, but no. Okay, so yeah. get your smelly ass off my <laughs> podcast. <laughs> uh, fair enough, fair enough. But I am sitting in your chair right now, so yes. that is disgusting. All right, let's wrap this up with one more question before I have to desanitize this room. Um, Teddy probably doesn't even wipe. All right, this question here from Amy at Book Chic Geeks: Top five Harry Potter characters you would want in your squad against the Avengers. Top, the top five? Yeah. We get fucking smoked. This is awesome, though, because you get to bring the bad guys with the good guys. Right. Dumbledore, Voldemort. Yeah. Oh, you pick two. Snipe. We got to work yeah. together. Professor Snipe. It's Harry Knight. I wish it was Professor Snipe, but it's Snape. Professor oh, Snipe. Yeah. That would yeah. be harder. Sorry, Snape, excuse me. No, that's his name when he fights the Avengers. Is yeah. Harry like, oh, that Snipe now. nice, or is it because he has the wand? No, Harry is... Because once once he gets Voldemort out of him, He's right? not an all-timer. Yeah, once he he's gets... great against defense against the Dark Arts. He's a uh, Horcrux, right? Yeah, he beat Voldemort so he because that, he, he game-planned with Yeah, and once he gets that out of him, he's just a regular wizard, he's right? He's the goat. Yeah, yeah, he's... Uh, no, but Hermione's a stronger wizard. Mm-hmm. Overall. About, uh, smarter. I don't know. I think she's... He's great at defense against the Dark Arts, so that makes him good against... She doesn't have people it when the lights come on. trying to kill him with magic. Strange. Exactly. So maybe you put Harry on that team. You he's so? your defensive guy. He's a kid. Yeah, at the end of the, bo- I mean, I in, in adulthood, he's he's an aura. So you got Voldemort, Mad Eye Moody, because that man's a problem. You know, he's he's, he's the intimidator. What he's, about Moan and Myrtle? <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say so Dobby, immature that we're all <laughs> we're all laughing at that. <laughs> we're all like giggling, like yeah. ha, 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 moaning. We are we are nerd soup for a reason. Dobby, is he nice? Are you kidding me? Dobby was snapping everywhere. He was freeing Harry Potter. His magic was more powerful than the wizards. He just got fucking stabbed. And you could tell him what to do. Can I bring, like, one of Hagrid's monsters? I feel like that would be dope. The spider? No. What about Jewel? Sirius Black? Eh. Grindelwald, is he nice? Grindelwald was good, yeah. Johnny Depp's Grindelwald. Who's Josh Gad? Not Josh Gad. I'll be Josh Gad. <laughs> He doesn't have magical powers. Oh, no? No, he's just a baker. What's his name? Team will be well fed. The guy from Balls of Fury. Everyone plays a role. I forget his name, yeah. Everybody plays a role. Everybody's need got the a baker role on to the play. Team. Yes. You need to be greater than the sum of your parts. I'm leaving fucking Eddie Redmayne's ass. I'm not a big Newt bench. guy. Newt, yeah. Newt's not the best. Who did, uh, I can't remember his name right now. Who did, um. Cedric Diggory? Yeah. yeah. That's my boy! That's my boy. That's a great scene. Oh, that's such a good Sad, movie but, too. Yeah. yeah, he's back. He's back. Uh, he's back. <laughs> How dare you say I'm not a good actor? How dare you? Both of you. No, I said you're good. You said I'm I, good. Yeah, but I didn't. I don't think you can outact Robert Pattinson and Willem Dafoe. Dafoe, no. You've never Pattinson, acted before. I'm I saying would go you have toe potential. To toe. 
I did not mean to rhyme that. You're like an R.J. Barrett, you know? I have, what, A potential? Yeah, mm-hmm. you got an A, A, A minus. Not bad. Okay. Usually I'm somewhere around the C's. You don't think Nash could act? You feed into his ego too much, man. I feed into his ego. A lot of people do tell me I should be a stand-up By comedian. telling him that I, he could act. Yes, because he can't. It's obvious. No, I think... No one tells you you should be a stand-up comedian. Swear to God. Swear on my life. Tell us a joke, funny man. I have to write a script. You think well, Seinfeld needs scripts? What the hell? You think Seinfeld needs scripts? Oh my god! I do watch Seinfeld, and sometimes Jerry reminds me of you, and you two remind me of Jerry and George, and Nash is Jerry, and you're George, and Teddy's Kramer, and I guess that would make me Elaine. Elaine. <laughs> I want to be Newman. Nice so bad. <laughs> you're not Newman. I'm Newman. You are Seinfeld, dude. Let's go. Um, Seinfeld, Lennon, who else? No, but I feel like I can pick off people who could become. Good actors. I'm not saying Nash is a good actor now, but I'm saying if he trained. Me, I think I could. I also think I could be an actor if I trained. You, maybe. I don't even know where you're getting all this. You think you would be a good actor? Yes. I'm very animated with everything that I do. This is basically, what we're doing now is a form of acting. Correct. We've brought people on the podcast and they just can't speak. Uh Uh-huh. I mean, it's a step up to get in front of the camera, but this is a form of stand performance. Up. This yeah. is an easier way of stand-up comedy because you don't have to deal with the audience, but, you know, people are going to listen, you know? I'm just spitting it out there, and if they want to laugh, they laugh, you know? I don't know what to tell you. But I don't have to deal with their faces, like, oh, my God, this guy fucking stinks on Broadway. Exactly. I would never try stand-up or acting. And this is no insult to your friends because we have a lot of the same friends, but you're not you're not shooting your material out to... The best audience, <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> it's like they agreed. <laughs> they, they laugh at the stupidest shit. Well, I know how to pick off my victims. Oh, weird phrasing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I don't think I, you're. I, I mean, your audience, you want to laugh at your jokes, call them as victims. Yeah. Actually, you could because you jokes. I look at them bad. as trophies. Yes, you. Plant there are times where he, where he does. Yeah. He'll do something, and everyone will be laughing, and I'll just be sitting there like, "That's this is what entertains you, clowns." Yeah, but you and Nash have like this weird rivalry of who's who's funnier. I don't try as hard. <laughs> I'm just myself. I don't try. You are so you, you are the you, worst you, with you, that though. Everything with you is if you lost, I wasn't trying or I don't know it, and if you win, you're the best. That's yeah. 